I took Jameer Gibbs at the 12th pick, final pick of the first round. Okay. And I think it's interesting to think about him hmm. as a fantasy player for next year because he's not going to have the cleanest, most flawless profile that you look for in, in a first round back, right? Because he is sharing a backfield with David Montgomery. Am I running a like a too thin of a margin for error with Jameer Gibbs as a first round pick? I some, think some people will argue that, but at the same time for me, I think I want to double down on that ecosystem and view this guy as a yeah. first round pick next year. And it, it's so it's so tough because even if you look at like my situation like this last year, like pretty much had all the same pieces back, right? The whole offensive line was the same, right? They had the same receivers, and it's like, okay, look at our production. We had a couple changes here and there, but you never, you never can tell. You never can tell. But even just looking at their scenario, right? And okay, what are the pieces that are coming back? Obviously, no. David just signed his, like I think, three years, mm -hmm. and then you know Gibbs is a rookie, um, so it's going to be probably the same type of situation. Maybe you know there's one that stands out more than others. But here, here's the thing: in my opinion, I think it, it makes for a healthier room, right? Because now you have two guys to rely on, and so it almost takes some off. As a competitor, you might be like, "Oh no, I want you to take every single rep." But it's like longevity is definitely a thing that you know is something that is talked about, especially in fantasy as well. So I think it's a great pick because even though they are going to be splitting, I think it, it helps them both out with their health, which that's. 100%, but then also they can continue to play at a high level. Um, and if they continue to do what they did last year, I mean, it, it makes sense. Are you taking David up in there as well? That's a tougher one. And again, it was only a first round mock, so I'm okay. not, I'm not, okay. I'm not okay. So you're not on the hook for that I'm one. I'm not right. on the hook for that all one. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. definitely don't even hold me accountable for anything. Okay. I'm doing about <laughs> next fantasy season in February. Yeah. But um, I think he's an interesting guy, maybe like a Maybe could be a third round pick, something like that. I, okay, I think so you think, you think Gibbs comes in is more of the primary there I, over time? I think so, just because mm. he's younger. He mm. does have the pass, like a little more pass catching role there, yeah. which is in fantasy pretty important. Yeah. But I, I love your point about how that the presence of Montgomery is not necessarily, it will be pitched as a negative. Yeah, and I've talked about this too. It's like after my games, like especially when I was younger, like when Melvin would be there, I was like, I felt good after yeah. games. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, rock. let's go, baby. And then, you know, started to transition to where, like, hey, Austin, you're the feature. And it's like, my body hurts. Like, yeah. like I'm walking home and I'm going down the stairs sideways in the morning because my ankles, and it's like, my body is so beat up. Um, and so, no, having that, I'm telling you, having that tandem definitely has helped. And um, I think it could definitely be seen as a negative as far as, oh, he's going to be taking his reps. But I think over time it actually is more positive because there's going to be more availability because of it.